um, so what to uh, this this session? A member has talked a lot about um, you know the the calamities we had, the setbacks in the recent history of Sierra Leone. So um, we know it has impacted negatively the you know the industry, but how can all those be mitigated now for for us to you know to face a new phase of you know of salon tourism where we um, you know, we feature more positive things and then we, we uh, leverage on those instead of, you know, what, uh, what was happening and, uh, and those, all those negative setbacks that, uh, as, as uh, Bimbola said, attracted more attention than the positivity, you know, and the, the positive aspects that uh, Salon has to, to offer. How can we mitigate all those setbacks? Yeah. Mm. Okay. As Bimbola knows, he knows exactly what I'm going to say. No. <laughs> you want to say what I'm going to say? <laughs> okay. Rebranding, rebranding, rebranding. Mm -hmm. That's from an international point of view. Mm -hmm. um, because there is, you see, in the West or in the rest of the world, I don't want to say West because that's not the only target market for us. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think our main target market should be within the region. Yeah before anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, we have beautiful places in Africa to visit each other mm -hmm. first before we go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing is, because of our war, our civil war that lasted for so long, um, uh, people still have that thing in their minds. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we got Ebola. If you go abroad, as soon as you say Sierra Leone, oh, are you going to Sierra Leone? Really? I have so many people visit and they're family and friends are putting them up. Don't go there, don't go there, it's a dangerous place. Ebola, they chop up limbs, they have Ebola, don't go there. So now, what mm. I meant originally, when mm. I said we can use COVID to our advantage, mm -hmm. we have done really well with COVID, and yeah. I hope that we continue to. You all wear your masks and do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Because so far, we have done very well with COVID, I think in Sierra Leone, we don't tell, tend to pat ourselves on the back. We only see our negative yeah. points. Mm -hmm. But I think we deserve a hand in Sierra Leone for yeah. how we've done. Yeah. I think we deserve an applause to the government and the people of Sierra Leone. Yeah. You know, mm. we've done well. Mm. I mean, when I see how they're struggling abroad. So it's time we use this to our favor. Mm. Now we want to encourage the people. As you were saying something about us being an emerging destination. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to tap into this now that come here, you're safe. Mm -hmm and use this to our advantage quickly, mm -hmm. at the right time, at the right moment, twist it to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Our Ebola worked against us. Now they've, everybody has had their own taste of a pandemic. I'm sorry that we had to go through this as a world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, before we went through it alone as an epidemic. So now nobody can call Ebola anymore and we can see, prove how well we did with uh, COVID okay. and use it to our advantage, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I don't know about the other two. That's one of the ways we can do. The second way is uh, we, which Ebola, I will let him uh, go on, is uh, okay. fixing the local problems to make it ready for the, the tours to come. Mm -hmm. right. I'll let Ebola yeah. start on that. Um, so rebranding, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have to be intentional yeah. about where we want to take mm -hmm. the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. Right? We need clarity in terms of mm -hmm. the sort of uh, what we want to market, mm -hmm. right? Um, we also have to appreciate that, well, in my opinion, um, tourism alone cannot develop in isolation in terms of mm -hmm. we need a more holistic view mm -hmm. about what mm -hmm. the desti destination Sierra Leone has to offer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what you will have is um, you can, you don't want to have a situation whereby um, we're showing people all the wonderful things, but when they actually come here, the experience that they have doesn't match what has mm -hmm. been sold to them. Mm -hmm. So we need really to understand that, yes, tourism, but there's also uh, implications for uh, Ministry of Lands, mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, mining, agriculture, 
everybody has to understand that destination Sierra Leone needs to be seen as such, mm -hmm. right? We need to be mm -hmm. intentional. Mm -hmm. We need to, if we're serious about tourism, we need to be so mm -hmm. serious about protecting our tourism assets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, just a, a complete relook as to where we want to go as a country mm -hmm. um, and being intentional. And then tourism can fit into that or path. Uh, but my fear is that, you know, we're all, yes, we'll be making tiny steps forward, but if we want to make significant difference, I think a more holistic approach um, is, is required. Yeah, and I, I do think so. So, um, I think I was discussing with Linda about uh, the meeting I had with the general manager of uh, the tourism board. Yeah. And I was, I was uh, really very, happy to hear all what the tourism board has been putting in place along with the ministry. But but uh, still as you were you were talking about in terms of you know the economy setbacks and all, we still know that we're struggling with access to energy, electricity, and water. We also know we have, you know, our attitudinal uh, issues, like people who are throwing everywhere. We have garbage everywhere, our beaches really not representative of who we want to be. So even though you're selling that destination, you still know that it needs, as you said, it needs to be balanced with the reality of it. You know, the picture we, we painted at the beginning, at the introduction of this uh, show, you know, where they were talking, where we, I was talking about the contrast between the sky, the rainforest and the sea, and how that recalls the, the, um, the map of Sierra Leone. But that's, that's not how the view is now at the beach. So how, uh, what, what's the role of the, the authorities and the population in making that happen, in, in joining your own um, attempt to make the destination uh, up to its potential? Okay. Well, you see, um, that's why I handed over mm. to go into detail. Mm. But yes, um, protecting our assets um, as we said, it's very important. Mm -hmm. We said something about now. Yeah. If you see pictures of before, mm -hmm. Sir Leon was spotlessly clean beaches. Growing mm -hmm. up, I never saw one plastic bag on the beach. Mm -hmm. Now we have a major issue that they dump garbage in the sea. Mm -hmm. And government needs to make an attempt to clean up the seas. Because the first thing you hear, you know when you're in hotels, you, you hear the first thing that visitors that are yeah. coming Mm. For, we, we see through the eyes of the people that have seen us for the first time, mm -hmm. and we hear what they have to say. And one major problem is the, the, the filth in the seas and on the beach. And what, if you notice, in the beaches in the peninsula, mm -hmm. which are managed by the villagers, mm -hmm. the beaches are all spotless. Mm -hmm. Not that it doesn't get dirty, mm -hmm. but they go out and clean up their beaches. Whether it's the private properties on the beach, they clean mm -hmm. in front of their beaches but it's cleaned every day. Mm. Um, so the beaches there are cleaner, right? Mm. Um, so they need to make an attempt to clean the sea. That's the first part. And after that, we need to protect all our other assets, like our trees mm. and forests that are just burned down because somebody bought the land. Yeah. You know, there needs to be a regulation on how many trees you can chop down. Um, we're a beautiful green country and we're becoming mm. an ugly brown country. Mm. Um, so um, we need to work on those points. Mm. They need to support us as an industry to provide the best that we can for our, our guests. Mm. Because um, energy costs are tremendously high mm. um, and very difficult to, 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 to maintain. Um, in the COVID times, uh, they have made an effort. I have to say, and mm. I have to say this, the minister is very proactive and she's come a long way in the term that few years she's had. I feel really bad that COVID hit at such a time mm. because we were um, on and we're working towards this and we were beginning to like form our hand mm. where she's working very closely with the tourist board. The tourist board is making a huge effort mm. to really try and develop the country trying very, very hard and COVID hit. Mm -hmm. Even so, they made a huge effort mm -hmm. to manage yeah. to get our staff paid mm -hmm. um, 
we're still waiting, but I know she's trying to try and get some uh, financial uh, relief for the the hotels themselves. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, mistakes are made along the way. It's been a very difficult uh, and new situation with mm -hmm. COVID, mm -hmm. um, but they're trying. Mm -hmm. They're trying, but there's a long way yet to go. And again, we say we keep getting these shocks to the system that yeah. keep coming up. But we're resilient, and I think we will get through them. Um, yeah. Yeah, if I can add to that, we have a couple of serious issues mm -hmm. um, that we face at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is obviously deforestation. Yeah. Okay. But also sand mining. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sand mining mm -hmm. going around, going on around the peninsula. Um, and I think major it's, yeah. yeah, all the major tourist areas are again, coming mm. under immense pressure. Mm. Um, and I think it's something that we really need to address mm. uh, because, you know, the demand for sand is only increasing, um, especially in Freetown. The population of Freetown yeah. continues to increase. The amount of housing um, mm. uh, continues to increase. Um, and it's an issue that I think we really need to tackle because what's happening is even the beaches, and I'm sorry to say, it's all the beaches are starting to lose uh, their beauty compared to what sand. it was like yeah. maybe in the 70s, where it was, mm -hmm. uh, as Randa said, it was spotless. You know, you look at, I'm sorry to say again, like Tokyo, you know, um, the sand is not as, as white mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as, as yeah. it used to be because it's being, you know, when you take the sand from one place, it compensates, you know, another mm -hmm. place compensates. So, and some of the structures that are coming uh, are coming up around the peninsula, in time, chances are they'll collapse. And uh, we we saw it in the past. Mm -hmm. If you go down to Laka, mm -hmm. there's yeah. just remnants of, of of property that you know were claimed back by the sea. So yeah. I think we need to be um, we need to be serious about um, that in particular. Like I said, you know we can we can market, mm -hmm. but if those issues are not are not mm -hmm. um, tackled, destination Sierra Leone will con will continue to, to struggle mm -hmm. uh, but i want to reinforce what Kat, um, randa said as well um the, the minister has been uh, quite a, an energetic uh, and, and pushful force for the industry um mm -hmm. i've seen i've seen many ministers and i i'll go on record every time to say this is the most energetic uh and i think passionate uh, minister for the industry that we've ever had um and um you know again it's unfortunate that COVID happened when it did uh, but um we will continue to remain resilient and uh, you know keep the morale up that's one of the things about covid um the less obvious you know when you have people that are you know you can imagine you put so much energy and then something happens that uh, just kills everything yeah. it's only human that you know your morale is going to go down you know entrepreneurs business owners you have to pay people um you know you, it's it's a lot of stress um and also for you know for staff it's so everything is so uncertain that uh, it's bound to affect people, you know, yeah. uh, people's yeah. mental health. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, so that's maybe w one of the less obvious factors of COVID. But you know, just like you said, we have to be resilient. I'm tired of being resilient, by the way. <laughs> so be honest, I am tired of being resilient. But you know, what do you do? We continue to push. But on. because you're so resilient, you're still resilient. <laughs> That's great. I would suggest a very warm round of applause for this minister and the general manager of the tourist board. Um, you know, we, can, we are in a position to always either, like, it, it, it's still constructive criticism, still, but we still criticize when our leaders don't do it the way they were supposed to do it. You know, we know about the businesses. They do it because they're trained a certain way and also their own survival depends on it. But we are suffering so much when our leaders don't do what is expected from them, you know, when, what they're supposed to do. So we see people, and both of them are female, which is yeah, really yeah, incredible, yeah. you know, so. That's, that's women lead. I'm glad you put it. Is, it is, it is, yeah. yeah. So um, I just wanted us now to go back to, you know, the positive aspects of Sierra Leone tourism. So what are the assets that when we leverage on them, we can have, you know, a better uh, industry. So what what does uh, Salon has that is absolutely unique and that we can leverage on? For me, I think our greatest asset is the warmth of the people. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Mm. Uh, because um, it's 
Soviet Union, they're very warm, embracing people. They're very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to go somewhere where they don't feel at home or they don't feel welcome. So mm -hmm. that is one of the first things. Mm -hmm. And this is what I pride, pride myself yeah. on yeah. in my business, yeah. is that when people come there, they love the staff. Mm -hmm. They love it. You, you make, but you can have a beautiful thing. If the people in it are not welcoming, Cannot yeah. have a good term, yeah, term yeah. so we got that mm -hmm. uh, natural beauty, uh, incredible, mm -hmm. incredible. But we have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being eroded. Bimbola was talking about Toke. Uh, we have a place on Toke. I grew up on Toke. Mm -hmm. You remember Bimbola? I do the regatta every year. The beach front is now so little. If I wanted to do it anymore, I don't know how it's we mm. have to expand this way. Okay. If I show pictures of where we were like five years ago mm. or six years ago and now the beachfront, how much sand we have, mm. it's a huge difference. Mm. Huge. Mm. It's like half of it, if not quarter. Mm. Uh, and yes, already the buildings in Tokyo have started to be eroded. Mm. Uh, so we have to, we're fighting against nature. Mm. Um, We've lost the, the, the cleanliness of the seas. Mm -hmm. So, but the other thing that we can use to our advantage, after putting these in check, mm -hmm. we have to stop and start again yeah. with maintaining the sites, mm -hmm. with the, uh, these problems, with the sand mining, with the forestation, and cleaning up our seas and beaches. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, once that is done, we need to focus on a niche market for our tourism. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that now tourists are fed up of going to commercial places where you have tons of people lining up the beaches and you don't have anywhere to sit. Mm -hmm. They want to come and have an experience. So even if our roads are bad, we make it into an experience mm -hmm. where you're in a, in a, it's, it's a quad ride on a bad road. It's mm -hmm. part of the experience that you're having. Mm -hmm. Once you turn it into experience, our long mm -hmm. trip from Lunge, we start off with the welcoming coconut at the pelican and some musicians and artists over there you know there's so much we can do that will make you not feel the trip that it's late mm -hmm. or if the planes that are coming with the tourists land and are because depending what time you land in Lunge mm -hmm. I have guests to tell me that uh, oh wow this is the most magical landing I've ever had why because they landed at sunset and they saw the sun mm -hmm. setting having a drink while waiting for their boat and you come at 10 o'clock at night and it's dark and you're being mm. harassed by people yeah. outside. Hey, let me take it, let me take mm. it. <laughs> and they come and they go, I was terrified, yeah. I was terrified. So you just, when you look at the two different, you just can yeah. see that you just, it's about changing the experience mm -hmm. more than changing the, mm. the place itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to create the right experience for the person mm -hmm. within your surrounding. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't take you too long to build your 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 tourism market. Mm -hmm. You can start earlier rather than later. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. You want to add something? Um. Yeah. Just in terms of, um, I think the question was some of our more positive yeah, attributes yeah, and yeah. Um, you know, Rand Randa hit it. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't give ourselves enough credit as Sierra Leoneans. Mm -hmm. Sierra Leoneans are some of the warmest mm -hmm. and most hospitable people naturally. In fact, in Sierra Leone, we like to say, oh, we like to enjoy Pata Oye. So, I think that we, we like to enjoy, how's your cookie? No, just say it again. We like to enjoy Pata, we like to oh, say, like, okay. you know, we like mm -hmm. all the culture. Um, you know, so definitely. And I think what, obviously, what, what makes us unique is uh, Sierra Leone culture. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's yeah. what makes us different from Liberia or Guinea, mm -hmm. you know, let alone from, you know, people coming even uh, further afoot. And I think we... Just as we need to protect our beaches and our, and our trees, we also need to protect our culture. Yeah. Um, and I think you know that's that's a, a part that uh, you know young people also have to uh, they have to play a part in mm -hmm. uh, because you know that knowledge has to be handed down to them and they have to take care of it and hand it over to other people as well. Um, now, even tourism, when you look, a lot of what is happening, if we're, if we're honest, is happening in Freetown. And uh, mm. Freetown is what probably about five percent, yeah. not even ten percent of the rest of the country, mm -hmm. and that's just like a blank Perfect. canvas, mm -hmm. just uh, you know waiting to be explored. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our ecotourism potential is huge. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that the National Tourism Board is 
to develop. You know, I can only think of one ecology, which is the Sakudama um, ecology um, in, in Matos. You know, in most of the accommodation facilities of county are just you know, are, are bad imitations of Western hotels, and I think that there's an opportunity for ecology. I mean, in in yeah. South African places, you're paying a thousand dollars a night, yeah. you know, and there's a waiting list yeah. um, to stay in, in some ecologies, uh, and that's where I run this point to um, target it. being a, a more niche destination yeah. is important. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's always been so fragile, and we we can learn from people that have been there, like the Gambia, and decide that that's not the route <laughs> that we're going to go down, yeah. for example, and we can see how we develop our own uh, tourism industry. Mm -hmm. uh, to match, you know, the sort of clientele that we want to attract. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, we talk about Freetown, and I think the history is very, very significant. Mm -hmm. I think Freetown. Yeah. You know, I think when you talk about the transatlantic slave trade, mm -hmm. it connects um, to America maybe more than any other, other destination. Um, we've been slow. Uh, Ghana have seen that opportunity. They run with it. Um, and you know, some historians will tell you that actually Serian has the closest tie to African Americans, and I think there is still an opportunity there that we can mm -hmm. that we can take advantage of, and I uh, I truly believe that's um, that's another positive um, for 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 Serian. Thank you so much. Um, I think for today, I'm gonna ask the audience if like what were the nuggets that you received from um, from the speakers. Or what is you know one of the niches that you have detected those those entrepreneurial gaps that you really would ponder over later and that will be attached to something okay so let's let's see what that will, will be so I just wanted to to um, end with, with this question like how, how can we encourage domestic tourism you know like uh, Sierra Leoneans themselves going to places discovering paying money to discover and um, enriching those communities or places but like most of what we're talking about when we talk about tourism is other people coming in so how can we encourage domestic tourism even better well actually it's interesting that you say that um okay uh domestic tourism has proven to be very important especially during covid time mm. and like i said when things happen we evolve yeah so we've now noticed uh, we, we now everybody wants to tap into sometimes things happen for a reason mm -hmm. so maybe we were ignoring this market although we had been already talking about it but when yeah. COVID hit it was like okay this is the only market now because mm -hmm. we only now we know that but maybe one day we'll be living in a bubble and it's just us so yeah. let's see what we can do with each other mm -hmm. but the good part of that is I can say from being in this country for the last 20 years or so uh, I'm from here, but I mean, mm -hmm. watching yes. the last 20 years. I have seen a huge development in the middle class of Sierra Leoneans going out. Mm -hmm. And this is what has helped us manage to survive in COVID, despite the restrictions. But even like now when we opened up, we don't have international tourists. We barely mm -hmm. have anyone. Mm -hmm. We have a few regional, very few uh, non-regional. Mm -hmm. um, and mostly we're depending now on, our, our, on ourselves. Mm -hmm. as Sierra Leoneans to go out, have our events, have our birthdays, uh, and people are coming out. They are coming out. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what we need to work on is uh, visiting each other as villages, towns and mm -hmm. villages, mm -hmm. and the ecologies, as mm -hmm. he said. And what he said was rightly so. Mm -hmm. uh, rural tourism does not is not versus luxury tourism. Yeah. Rural tourism can be luxury tourism. Mm -hmm. I myself went on a camping but glamping they call it now glamping mm -hmm. trip to banana island where they have tents mm -hmm. and yeah. it can be even more upmarket than that so i think personally i agree with uh, bimbola mm -hmm. that that is a way to go that's our niche market mm -hmm. we have beautiful natural resources we need mm -hmm. to maintain those we need to create some luxury experiences within those with, again, I said experiences. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. be experiencing mm -hmm. our culture, but be comfortable. Mm -hmm. If it's in a tent, my mattress was beautifully comfortable. I didn't feel it. It was a beautiful wind from outside. Mm -hmm. I didn't have mosquitoes. 
uh, we had a lovely mm. dinner, all eco, all uh, reunion, um, enhanced, mm. a fusion cu cuisine, yeah. you know, with natural, uh, our yeah. own uh, products, whether yeah. it's coconut, whether it's uh, 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 the ginger, whether it's, mm. it was uh, old reunion, Afro fusion. Mm. Uh, it was amazing. We had a wonderful time. Mm. And there are two or protests like Bimbola and others mm -hmm. that are now doing weekend trips that we're all going on. Because somebody like me, I haven't been away for a whole year. Okay. So now what do I do? I go, I went to Banana Island. I plan on going somewhere else. I wanted to go to the, see the, the Pygmy Hippos, but I'm worried about the accommodation there. Mm. So maybe I won't go. What is it called? Pygmy Hippos? The, where the, yeah, mm. the pygmy, where they have, the, where, 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 T.Y. Island. Oh, T.Y. Island. It's also got a bird sanctuary. Okay. And it's absolutely mm. stunning, but I want somewhere decent to sleep. Yeah. To sleep. I cannot go and be somewhere that I don't know is certified. Yeah. So what we need to do is just improve the accommodation a little bit mm -hmm. and make it clean, comfortable, we're not talking about uh, marble floors yeah. and uh, no people love having the hammocks under the coconut trees mm -hmm. um, and experiencing nature but nothing nothing fancy but still luxurious right. and that's what we need and safe yeah, and okay. yeah. 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 Um, yeah so before i hand the mic to the audience members who have some nuggets that they would like to share with us or who spotted some of the misses because I recognize some tourism students. Adama is one of them. She, she told me you finally touched my industry, so I know you were super uh, invested in this uh, this session. Yes, yeah. Mr. To uh, Butcher's um, Randall's point about domestic tourism, mm -hmm. you know, as I said, we need to be intentional yeah. about what we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, Domestic tourism is important for a lot of economies. Mm -hmm. Maybe just as how we're talking about rebranding Sierra Leone to the international markets, maybe we need to consider rebranding Sierra Leone for the local market as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So uh, locals can fully understand mm -hmm. and appreciate mm -hmm. uh, what's out there for them. Yeah. Now, domestic ter ter uh, tourism does have a huge challenge mm -hmm. um, because tourism is, is recreational. Right. Mm -hmm. Tourism really is dispo disposable income driven. Yeah. So it's it's a challenge uh, to create experiences for for the majority of people outside of Britain, for example, because it's it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And this is this comes back to my point about tourism being difficult to develop in isolation of everything yeah. else that's sort of um, going on. Mm -hmm. um, but Brandon made an excellent point. I mean. Now, a lot of um, hotels and restaurants that are open actually rely on um, on, on the local market. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have not been able to. Normally, especially between the months of July to like September, you know, many Sierra that can afford it leave the country. Uh, but a lot of people yeah. this year, they yeah. didn't actually go now anywhere. We are, we are all in. And yeah. people, <laughs> you know, it's called, it's called staycation. Yeah. You know, you right. actually have a vacation where where you live. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things that uh, COVID really has helped uh, to highlight. Uh, what we've been doing, to be honest, we've been doing hikes, mm -hmm. right? Um, we've been doing, like we just, in November, we run a, a series called Movember, mm -hmm. where we just encourage people to get active, right? Because mm -hmm. A, that's so a, innovative and creative, yeah. Movember. A, a, <laughs> it's important because, you know, building your health you know, it's important to fight against COVID. Huh? Mm -hmm. There is pre preventative measures in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then we saw it as an opportunity to get people walking. So we started with uh, Leicester Peak. We did mm -hmm. like a, 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 a walk from Leicester Peak to, from, from Bottomango to Leicester Peak. Killer, back. killer, it's a killer. It's what? That's it's a, a killer. killer. It's a killer. <laughs> Have you done it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and then no, we went. No, not from, not from Bottomango, from the, the from embassy. From the bottom of the hill. So up. <laughs> Well, we did it from Botswana oh. to, to Leicester Peak and back, mm. and then we did um, the Mambo Waterfall, which I'm sure oh, a lot of people yes. have heard about. Mm. Um, we we went from the junction up to the falls mm -hmm. and back, uh, and then we moved to Sugarloaf because uh, basically what we were trying to do is build the intensity mm. for people. 
right? Mm. We moved to Sugarloaf, which is the second highest uh, yeah. peak in Freetown, and that one, that one was that one was a killer uh, for a lot of people. Mm. Uh, and then after uh, Sugarloaf, we went to uh, Pickett, mm. uh, Pickett Hill, which is in total like a seven-hour hike um, oh. up and down. Uh, yeah, mm. and um, you know, it, it, for a lot of people, they wouldn't think about going to those places, mm -hmm. but. It was important for us to do it like for the three hikes we didn't charge people anything we're just like just show mm. up you know you, let's just show up and and walk mm. so that you can be also also be a part of the experience mm -hmm. but with uh picket because you you know you have to get a bus and everything so there was a minimal mm. minimal fee but i think if we can bring the costs down mm -hmm. right so things like energy costs are tackled if we can bring the cost down if there's special rates maybe for Sierra unions who want to you know yeah. participate in some of mm -hmm. these things I think we can start getting yeah. people more um, in, in, involved in it. Yeah. So, so it's, I'm still seeing how innovation yeah. can encourage people. To, yeah. to, you know, because I think it's 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 all of us. We don't know the interior part of yeah. our country. We just know where we live. Yeah. And it's it's an amazing country. We have amazing countries, but we barely just discover. But if we have you know innovative and creative people who can create packages that are within which but still very attractive, then, then I don't see even why people would not embrace that. Well, we have at the Swiss Hotel at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, just a good promo for uh, all upliners or even locals in mm -hmm. Freetown that mm -hmm. would like to have a staycation, as he just said. It's a staycation mm -hmm. package mm -hmm. for Sir <laughs> Union mm -hmm. that you can spend the $200 three nights at yeah. the Ottomanian. <laughs> Ottoman. <laughs> Three nights, yeah. bread and breakfast. Um, so it's basically two nights for the three nights for the price of two. Mm. And we also have a special rate where we're doing fifty percent on all our rates for people. Well, usually we do this every year mm. for the diaspora, the people coming back oh. home. Mm. But uh, it's going to apply for anybody coming back. The people visiting from you just want to get away from your house mm -hmm. and feel. And with the new pool and we have. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful terrace. You have the mountains right in front of you. We have Afro Zumba on the terrace three times a week, dancing away to Jerusalem. And that is so fun. Um, and it's just nice. Yeah. So we're looking forward to receiving uh, people from up country, people locally that just want to get away for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we have made very special rates for that. Great. For very special people. I, I have thought that. I have thought that. Thank you so much. And, and I think that also transitions from our last edition. We were talking about nutrition and the sport. And we were told so much about, you know, um, how to do the, the importance of developing our metabolic rate, you know, how sport was very necessary for entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, for the population in general. And I think being that educated about the importance of sport, Zumba, um, you know, November, or oh, November. Oh, yeah, so, you know, we have our niche for activities to do. Yeah, so without without further ado, I would uh, hand the floor to Mike to uh, MJ for the question and answer session. Um, my question is actually not for a specific individual, but it's general for the, for the individual the panel. Like it says, is there any platform for uneducated people in the tourist industry? Like, uh, you know, we are living in Sierra Leone where most people are, are industrial in some way, but they are not educated. Is there any platform that the industry have created for those people so that they can explore? And I also want to recommend to the, the, the entire tourist board family that the area that the lady cited, it's very important that you guys have it documented from all these domestic tourist places that we have. Have it a copy like a magazine, present it to each and every hotel that is operating in Sierra Leone or within Sweden municipality. I think that will help a lot to send a lot of message to people that are at the diaspora or people that want to visit Sierra Leone. Thank you. My name is Oluso Gishen and I'm a photojournalist and also an arts director. So my question goes this way. Aside COVID-19, what are the risks um, travelers face during tourist travels? Aside COVID-19, what are the risks? And secondly to you, Ma, 
do you do partnerships? Because uh, I belong to an art organization here in Cape Town, and we 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 do more of culture and tourism programs. So I'm I'm concerned if you guys allow partnerships and and some other things to come to the Cape Town. Thanks for this program, Anna. I think as an accountant today, I've got a new one. And I don't know, <laughs> because the story accounting, I have, I have never heard of hospitality accounting also. So I think I can try that one. And my question is, how can young people be actively engaged in the hospitality sector, especially local tourism, as the focus has been on, on international tourism? And that's a question that you have dialed on. This past weekend, we are at the place to care. And then we went to 2K boats to the Banana Island. And then the guy said, give us 300,000 for six of you. And we said, ah, how can we pay that money in our county? But you see, if we go to Ghana, you want to see a phone, you pay about five CDs. But once it's our county, we don't normally put money to run to those places. So I don't know how the hospitality sector can, how can we say this word? can have an input so that people will value this local tourism. Good afternoon. Um, I like the one from Mr. Kawa. He okay. said, we need to be intentional and have holistic view on the approaches of our tourism sector, right? Like, we need to shift the mindset from um, the, the war or other things. So we need to think about, when thinking about tourism, let's think about our food. Uh, arts and crafts, the unique culture that we have in our Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. our historic and colonial places, protect our ecotourism, make sure that we don't destroy them or dist uh, discover our habitats. So my question here is, it, how can we shift our attention from the needs and focus on the areas apart from our mineral resources and the disaster to gain more attraction from tourists? My question is, about the, the life that you know, because as a tourist, if you are arriving any beaches around, you might swim out. So we, we are already trained by uh, WHH and other as well. Like we are uh, volunteers, you know, we don't receive any salary from no one. You know, so I wanna ask about these people, the life that what they help for the lifeguards, you know, because we have uniforms, we have equipment, you know. So that's my question. Thank you. Uh, my question here is, uh, um, the topic is very awesome, uh, tourists and tourists. Um, we all know that this tourism is all about attraction. In our country, for this to be attractive to our people, we need a um, sustainable um, development. Uh, in this sustainable development, our nation at large, or at all, I think um, we need to focus on this uh, cleaning, cleaning beaches and some of these attractive areas. It's a question of also economics. Uh, how could we um, sustain these very uh, attractive places? Thank you. Um, yes, we do do partnerships. Um, at the Swiss. Um, we should call ourselves Aquatrip because we thrive on promoting the Sierra Union culture. If you come into the hotel, you see that we have a lot of local arts. Uh, our Zumba is not Zumba, it's Afro Zumba. Our dishes are a lot of fusion dishes. Um, and um, we like to have new innovative Sierra Union events or we promote Sierra Union chefs. Sometimes we think from abroad. We try to train and get people involved in different ways. So yes, I'm not sure what it is that you do, but you can let us know. And sometimes where we cannot do the partnership and we know there's anywhere else we can pass you on to, or introduce you to people, we do that. Okay? Thank you. We're happy to do that. Um, do I have anything else? Somebody. Okay. The local accountants, yes, ask about the accountant for hospitality, um, Mr. Conte. Okay, we're, we're looking for you guys, so encourage more people to join. I leave the rest to Bimola. Adam, very much. Um, you mentioned the oxygen, the very simple. The 
know your case is actually one of the most organized. I don't know how many people are going to run. It is so structured with the, the, the way it's actually a planned out town, um, the likes of which you don't see um, that much along the peninsula. Uh, Prospect is very similar, but it's York itself. And it has so many touristic um, uh, assets that you, you just mentioned. And to be honest, a lot of them are just rotting away. Even close by, you know, they used to do way watching um, in, uh, mm -hmm. around York as well. Um, so we have, for example, we have an itinerary on our website where uh, that involves York. It's one of the places that we take people to. If they're going, say for example, if they're going to Banana, we would normally do um, a tour of York. Or if they're going to Tokyo, maybe on the way there, on the way back, uh, we actually have tours that we do for within York Town. So we, you know, as a company, try to promote it. The Tourism Federation, that's the Tourism Federation, that's not really um, the Tourism Federation's job per se, because the Federation is there to work with associations. Uh, but nevertheless, we are in a position where we can dialogue with people like the National Tourist Board and even the Ministry of Tourism. And wherever we can advocate, um, we, we, surely, we surely will do so. Uh, somebody mentioned creating a magazine, going to a place like York, creating a magazine, uh, taking, it, taking it to all the hotels. Um, that's a great idea. Okay, now the issue with that is, is, is cost. Uh, it is going to cost. And the one thing about magazines, you know, to be honest, they're, they're only as good as the date that you print them. Okay, what I, would, what I would advise you to do, or suggest to you, if I can, anyone here, right, can take a mobile phone, go to York, do a documentary on York, okay, post it online, and have it shared. You have a platform where you can you can reach so many people, and I think uh, more Salinians need to take advantage of that opportunity. It is really really easy for you to help sell Salin as a destination. This isn't something that should just be left to hotels or even to tour operators. Okay, as an as a Salinian, we all have a stake in the development of destination Leone, and it's something that you can easily do um, by yourself digitally uh, rather than necessarily you can print it but like i said somebody has to pay for that so you, you can do it you can have people sponsor it um domestic tourism i think somebody mentioned domestic tourism and an idea came to mind because really i talked about uh, domestic tourism earlier and i said one of the issues or challenges with domestic tourism can be cost because a lot of people will want to visit places but uh, they don't, can't necessarily afford it. And I thought to myself, well, maybe what should happen is companies, okay, should be, they should, they should have it. I don't know how you can even enforce that. Maybe you can have the government to enforce that. In Senegal, I don't know if they have something like that whereby companies are required to do retreats for their staff, okay? I, I, I don't think enough companies are doing that, right? Um, I think as a way to build uh, team morale, uh, or you know team building what what we should actually do is try to get more companies to send their staff places like banana island send them hiking in kabala send them you know hiking Piquet. and I, I i i just think more should be you know we, we can possibly get more salinians um experience in Sierra Leone that way do you think they in general they focus with they doing outings on the beach Mm -hmm. That's what I've noticed, and so it's usually just going, taking the staff out for an outing mm -hmm. on the beach. Or maybe they need to now move to going offline. So some of those, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the 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 thing about the magazine as well, she was talking about. I think the tourist board is supposed to have budgets to do that. Mm -hmm. Then um, somebody else talked about the or the the rebranding and what mm -hmm. was being done. I know that five of the heritage sites, um, um, was it Adama? Five mm -hmm. of the heritage, the big five heritage sites, and there's a grant and money is going to be spent to develop those sites for tourism, right? Yeah. I can't remember each one off by heart, maybe you do. Um, and um, so government's already working on that. Um, and they also, for the rebranding, I also can't remember exactly who mentioned that. Um, there's also, they're employing an international company. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that, uh, there's a, a tender 
that's be, that has gone out, and I think they have, we have limited it, and they involve private sector. The federation was sure. involved, and other members of the private sector, and uh, they should have narrowed it down to to one uh, company by now. But COVID hit, obviously, it slowed everything down. So, looking by next year after COVID, we're assuming we can get back on track. So, government is also working on stuff. They're really working hard with the tourism, like we said before. Okay, just just to keep you updated, that we there. Slow strides, but strides are being made. Okay. And um, she, I, I, is it she? Yes, yeah, she. Is. Is <laughs> I, I noted that you only asked Randa about uh, possible collaboration, but um, you know, I, I'd be interested to talk to you about um, you know how we could possibly work together as well, because uh, you know we're also in the business of uh, content creation, and if you know if, if you're good with the lens, and I'm sure there's stuff that we can do. Together. Somebody mentioned uneducated people. Yes. As well. Do you want to touch on that? that? Yeah. Mohammed? Fuad. 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 Okay, yes. Um, you know, you meant in hotels or you meant in tourism general. in general? I meant in tourism and tourism. Okay. Uh, like what I was just about to say is because you know, like Bimbo like this said to Shay as well, that he's interested. With the hospitality industry, the tourism sector, we span a huge area. I mean, even the, the market sellers, the arts and craft people, they're part of our industry. Um, so it's not just about the hotels and uh, the tour operators. So um, we say uneducated people and the experiences, like people want to come, the villages. We should have the eco lodges up there. People want to hear the language being spoken. They want to experience the way people live their own culture. They're not coming to see people speaking English and trying to be English. So when they come for the experience of, of Sierra Leone, they would want to go to a village or York village, wherever, where they talk Creole or Timni or Mende or whatever they're talking, living their lives as they do, maybe cooking with them, maybe trying to climb up a coconut tree and pick co coconuts, maybe plucking oysters from the sea. So you have a translator. So you have all that, when it comes to the culture part, you have all that where it's very important. Music you, music is, uh, is, uh, is a universal language. So all those kinds of uh, avenues, all the arts and crafts, that's fine for people that are not educated in English. Um, but when it comes to working in hotels, meeting and greeting, you will need translators. You need to have one basic language skill, which is usually English, and you need to be educated, not necessarily to a, a, a level of um, a, a, a university, but you need to be for like uh, cleaning and many positions. You can be less educated, but you have to be able to speak English, you have to be able to read and write, because we live in a world of technology. I mean, even for people my age, Sometimes it's a struggle because I have had to adapt to all this technology that I was an A student in university, but I wasn't trained in using all these things. Whereas you people that have not even been to university, you can beat me at this any day. You know what I mean? You're probably like 18 or 16. And you know, you can do so many things that I can't do. So it's not only about reading and writing or speaking English anymore. Now it's all about technology. So even if you don't have a university degree, but you are tech, tech savvy, go to a, a college, go to a technical yeah. school. There are lots of technical skills you can learn that we need in the industry. Um, yeah. I'm just speaking off now, but yeah. you might have other avenues that you can guide yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you mentioned uneducated. Um, and I wonder if the word is illiterate, right? Yeah. Because I, I, I I think there's a slight mm, difference yeah. mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, you can be um, illiterate, but you have a lot of mm -hmm. knowledge, okay, that you can pass on to other people. You understand? So you can talk about things like maybe Gara Taidang, mm -hmm. right? Or people in the provinces that uh, there's there's so many, no, there's so much knowledge that people have, 
even in terms of how we cultivate some of our crops, right? That's that's something that's completely alien to somebody that is maybe coming from another country and is of huge value to them. You know, the, the way we, like local manufacturing, maybe the way people make cutlass or, you, you, do you know what I mean? It's like, these are all things, literally, that we can sell as part of um, tourism experiences. So even though, you know, uh, you may not be able to read and write, I still think there's space for you in the tourism industry. You, in other countries, it doesn't happen so much here. But even when you take people to villages, right? Some of the villagers, they may not be educated, but they can be hosts. So you can actually take people and, uh, you know, as Randa said, people want to eat with you. There's very few uh, intimate sort of relationships than sitting with somebody in their house and actually having dinner with them. And you can watch that food be created from scratch. Do you know what I mean? Like, these are all experiences. You know, when you go along the beach, people love the fact that you can literally go into the water, get a fish, bring it on shore, and put it on the fire, and then you eat it. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's, I think there's still like a lot of um, avenue for people that kind of eat them. Thank you so much, great speakers, great role models, and experts. Really, it was, it was amazing. You, you blessed me. You like you, uh, you blew all our minds because I think you're talking from from uh, an experience um, uh, standpoint. It's like the hands-on um, experience you were talking about. It's not just um, being that CEO, you know, the way people perceive CEO, but being somebody who's at every level of your of your business and appreciating the people who are serving at those levels because without them, the bigger picture would not be that beautiful. Um, so what I, what I um, captured because I am I am on a learning process that is that is amazing. You know what I captured from the, the question and answer section was first of all the photographer who asked that great question and the bold question about partnership. This this time is the time of partnership, you know. I remember even Randa telling me like you have that great idea, you don't have the money. Because many times you, you hear young people say, Oh Fundy, you have the great idea. Somebody has the money. And then you collaborate. So you know, you taking, you know, putting your your camera aside and then asking that question. And and, and something you asked about him mastering the lenses or stuff. Sometimes we fight, but I always call him back. You know, I, I always call him back because you look at his pictures. I'm like, no way. You know, everybody comes show me what they do, and I'm like, no, thank you. I won't pay. And and you know, that's that's also what people talk about Nigeria. You know. They they um, do what it takes for them to have that expertise. So it's it's not exclusive. We also have what it takes to do, but it it um, also requires personal um, sacrifice and investment in in what you're doing. So I want you to uh, to really uh, bounce back on that, and also to thank Aisha too for this great work that you did for creative work. Like it was upside down. You did. I was like, what did she just do? But this is super great. Thank you so much. And thank you to your mentor, also appreciating mentorship. She guided her and she was such a good student too. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Just wanted to conclude with some takeaways. Uh, first of which was, you know, the need for an enabling environment in this sector, you know, having government and all the authorities that are, you know, um, that are, um, let's say, involved in this country to join hands with the tourism um, sector to make it happen, because it, it takes all of us for, for it to happen. Also, celebrating the warmth of Sierra Leone, it, it's amazing, you know. We're all Africans, but you all know who beats you on what. So that's, that's an asset that we have, and we need to continue leveraging on it. Um, also, innovation and creativity, you know, it came back, you know, along the distraction and that's the only way we can, you know, um, be the top of our industry because you have so much competition. You have so many young people, from, you know, who are, who are so literate, who are so learned on certain things. But then how can you, you know, be innovative enough, creative enough for you to, uh, you know, be the, the world class level in your own industry? It's, it's, I think, up to us. Another takeaway that I have is also being intentional about our legacy 
what do we want to give as a legacy to the coming generation? You know, the world class level um, entrepreneur we just talked about. You know, some people talk, uh, think about days, how to how to deal with my days or my years. Some people, like those world class, think of the generation. So this is the generation I am living in, and this is how things are happening. How am I gonna make difference? You know, change the narrative for the generation to come, and that's I think what we all as leaders of today and tomorrow need to lay emphasis on. So those are the ones that captivated my attention the most and I wanted to share with you guys. I also wanted to thank you so much. Thank the, the great speakers we had today and the beautiful audience. Very vibrant and very engaged. So see you next month in another episode of the Thank you so much.